Today is the 68th anniversary of the Korean War. Many people have said this was the forgotten war. But by the attendance here this afternoon or this morning, we can see that you do remember. It is not forgotten and never should be. Now, the most important VIPs in the audience, and I'd like them to stand if they can, the Korean War veterans. Would you please stand if you can for a round of applause? Thank you. At this time, if you can, will you please stand for the presentation of colors by the Joint Service Color Guard and the playing of the national anthems. Color Guard, present the colors. At this time, I'd like to ask a distinguished speaker, the mayor of the city and county of Honolulu, the Honorable Kirk Caldwell. Yes, Good morning and aloha. aloha. Every time I dr drive into this beautiful punch bowl cemetery of the Pacific, I get chicken skin. I think about these hollowed grounds where men and women are buried who gave their last full measure devotion for freedom and for democracy. It's a special, sacred place. As has been mentioned, it's 68 years ago now, on June 25th, we we're at war once again. I mean, we are a place weary of war. World War II had just ended five years earlier. Total war between many countries. We weren't ready for another one, but communist North Korea, supported by the People's Republic of China, decided to bring us back to war again. And it was a devastating war. When you think about what the South Koreans lived through, what they had to deal with, I mean, within hours, Seoul was at war. The story of almost near defeat and then coming back to almost total victory and almost going into China says much about the Koreans and the Americans who fought in this war so bravely. As has been mentioned, almost 34,000 Americans died, some of them buried here. 150,000 South Korean military dead, 400,000 civilians South Korea died in this war. It was like World War II. You know, some say this is the forgotten war. These ceremonies here every year is about reminding us not to forget. But I think most of us would agree that it is not a forgotten war. And in fact, this war continues to this day. You see it and the negotiations between our government and the government of North Korea and the meeting in Singapore. You see it in our former Admiral Harry Harris going to be the ambassador to South Korea and what he's doing to maybe bring a conclusion to this war. There may be an armistice, but we're not at peace. And I know that the veterans here who fought in this war want to see a united Korea, one that is at peace and one where there is freedom and democracy, just like you see in South Korea today. I mean, I'm amazed at how the South Korean government rebounded after this war. The peninsula totally destroyed, and yet you go there today, and I believe Seoul, if you want to see a 21st century city, go to Seoul. 
It is the future. An economy that's one of the largest in the world, an army that's one of the largest in the world, and a community and a people that thrive after this devastating war. So with that, I want to thank everyone. Thank you for the honor of speaking to you this morning. Mahalo. Love all of you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mayor. At this time, I'd like to ask General Jin Young Kim. Aloha. Aloha. The President of the United States of America, the President of the United States of America, 조의를 표하고 싶습니다. 이 자리에 계신 한국전 참전 용사와 가족 여러분 여러분들의 헌신과 희생이 없었다면 오늘 대한민국은 존재하지 못했을 것이라고 우리는 생각하고 있습니다. 한국전쟁은 공산주의의 심락으로부터 대한민국을 보호하는 차원을 훨씬 넘어서 세계를 적화하려는 공산주의의 야욕을 저지하고 위대한 전쟁이었다고 나는 생각합니다. 그것이 내가 여러분을 영웅이라고 부르고 싶은 이유이기도 합니다. You are all hero. 한반도와 동북아에 진정한 평화와 안정이 뿌리 내릴 때까지 한미 동맹은 계속해서 전진해야 된다고 생각합니다. Go together. 같이 갑시다. 제목 준 영 김, we thank you for those heartfelt delivered remarks of appreciation for the war veterans, sir. At this time, I'd like to invite another gentleman to the podium to speak. He has wore the hat of the Attorney General for the State of Hawaii, and now the Lieutenant Governor, Doug Chin. Doug? Good morning and aloha. My own father was an interpreter during the Korean War for the United States Army, and I'm proud of that small effort that he was able to make uh, to be able to support the cause. But it's because of that collective courage that the Republic of South Korea now has democratic freedom, a striving economy, and that it actively assists other countries to achieve peace and stability for their people as well. The Republic of South Korea has transformed itself from a country that used to receive aid, that, that one that provides aids to others and is truly an example for the rest of the world. We are all proud of what's been accomplished and dedicate these achievements to the memory of our fallen brothers and sisters. So to all the veterans and to all the family members that are gathered here, thank you so much for being here. We're so honored and privileged to be able to celebrate this special time. Aloha. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. I have the honor and the privilege to introduce to you today your keynote speaker, Lieutenant General David Berger, United States Marine Corps. Uh, welcome. On behalf of uh, the commander of uh, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral Phil Davidson, I thank you this morning for the honor of being able to speak with you for a few minutes. And I would tell you from my perspective, it's uh, very humbling to do so. As you know, uh, 68 years ago on today, June the 25th, eight divisions of the North Korean People's Army, equipped with Soviet-made tanks, mobile artillery and aircraft, crossed the 38th parallel and invaded the Republic of Korea. It was about six and a half hours earlier than right now. It was a little after four o'clock in the morning. And if you think back where you were this morning at 4 o'clock in the morning, people were in bed, it was dark, and it was quiet. This was a complete surprise. The war that began that day raged on for the next three years, one month, and two days. 
And as uh, some other folks here this morning have said, this war is sometimes referred to as the Forgotten War. But I believe that the war was not forgotten, nor were the sacrifices of those who fought, died, or endured it. Certainly the people of South Korea have not forgotten the war. Neither have those veterans of the war. The South Korean veterans, the veterans from the United Kingdom, Canada, Turkey, Australia, Belgium, the Philippines, New Zealand, Thailand, Ethiopia, and many more, all who fought under the flag of the United Nations. Neither had the American soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who fought there, nor their families, especially, especially the families of those who did not return. They have not forgotten. More than five and a half million Americans served during the Korean War. And today, best estimates are there's a little more than a million left living. Pretty sure they have not forgotten. Included in those who have not forgotten are the distinguished people assembled here with us this morning. Mr. Jimmy Chin, which uh, almost everybody I'm, I'm guessing sitting here knows, uh, the president of the Aloha chapter of Korean War Veterans Association, a very proud member of the 1st Marine Division during the tough fighting in 52 and 53, fighting near Panmunjom. And I bring that up because in that area alone, right around Panmunjom, the U.S. suffered almost 1,000 casualties. But they dished out more than they received. Communist casualties were more than twice that. We're also very mindful of the 9,289 Korean War dead whose remains lay within these hallowed grounds, buried at the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific. They are not forgotten. And they are really the reason we're here for this ceremony this morning instead of somewhere else, to remember them. I can personally assure you that all of the United States Marine Corps has not forgotten the Korean War. We remember with honor the names of famous actions that still define the United States Marine Corps as a fighting force. Names like the Pusan Perimeter, the Chosen Few. And as mentioned earlier, it's not just Marines, we also remember others. Like U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Don Carlos Faith, which I'm pretty sure many in here know the story of him. He was commander of Regimental Combat Team 31, otherwise known as Task Force Faith. Lieutenant Colonel Faith and his FET and his men fought to the death protecting the right flank of the 1st Marine Division at the Chosin Reservoir, an action for which he was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. In my time serving as a U.S. Marine, I've been privileged to meet some of the men who fought so valiantly in Korea. And like others, I am completely in awe of them. Their stories of incredible hardships, phenomenal endurance, selfless sacrifice. They make them truly among our nation's greatest heroes. The shared sacrifice and hardships of those who fought and in too many cases died were not in vain. While the Korean War remains under an armistice today, many of uh, whom would say it's a, a stalemate, I think we can make a strong case that in the broader context, we won. Today, the people of South Korea are free. They elect their own government. They are free to practice their own religion. They are valuable members of the international community, and they are an economic powerhouse, and they are our good friends. As a U.S. Marine, like General Fenton and a number of others, we get to travel to South Korea over our whole span of our Korea, welcomed every single time with open arms. Our countries and our alliance remains rock solid. Both have bright futures. And all this is because of you, the veterans of the Korean War that stood up at the beginning of this ceremony. On behalf of a grateful nation, thank you. Your efforts were not in vain. You made the world a better place, and you are not forgotten. 
Thank you very much. At this time, if you can, will you please stand for military honors? Three gun volley, followed by taps. Taps will be paid by Tom Dolan, retired commander of the St. John Sheriff Department who came all the way from Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, present the colors. Bible salute. Ready. Eight. Five. Ready. Eight. Five. Eight. Five. We're going to have some presentations of gifts by General Kim of the Republic of Korea and General Wong, Republic of Korea, to the following individuals, which is a surprise to them. So please bear with us when we call forward Lieutenant General David Berger. Deputy Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, General Fenton. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor, Doug Chin. The Honorable Mayor, Kirk Caldwell. stand behind a podium and talk to people, you've got to ask them to do something. So I'm going to ask this audience, before you leave these hollowed grounds, visit the grave of a Korean War veteran. And if you don't know one by name, Colonel Horton will direct you to Section D with his 650 American unknown Korea War veterans buried. And as you depart these hallowed grounds, turn and give a veteran 
or the family of a veteran, a handshake, but better still, a hug of love and devotion for their service and sacrifice, an appreciation to let them know that they're not forgotten. Thank you very much for your attendance and being here.